13.11 is another huge patch where we will be seeing a mass amount of item alterations. Some items like Ghost Blade landed a bit overtuned, so it will be nerfed, while items like Dusk Blade and Static Shiv have been on the weaker side and will be buffed. The Rel Mid Scope update is dropping this patch as well. Lots to cover in this one, so with the help of our challenger players and analyzing the most recent data, we are set to bring you guys the 13.11 solo queue tier list. And just before we get started, if you want to improve fast to get the rank you've always wanted, then go to skillcap.com. Stop wasting your time grinding thousands of games only to see no progress. With Skillcap, you'll uncover the secrets to climbing ranks fast that only take a few minutes to learn and can be immediately applied in your next game. The best part? It's completely risk-free to try, as you're kept safe with our rank up insurance. If you don't significantly improve while actively using Skillcap, then you get your money back, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Get the rank you've always wanted by clicking the link in the description below. Alright, now let's kick things off by taking a look at all the item changes for 13.11. Starting with the buffed items, first up is Dusk Blade. The passive damage amp is being increased from 0 scaling to 15% to 0 scaling to 20%. Health threshold for maximum damage is also being increased from 20 to 30%. These are actually quite solid buffs, and with Ghost Blade now nerfed for 13.11, Dusk Blade should actually be a viable pickup now. Samira was one of the few champions seeing a lot of success with Dusk Blade in 13.10, even before these changes, so she should see a nice spike in power this patch. Our original assessment of Kraken Slayer during the 13.10 tier list came to fruition, as the item has been extremely niche and in a relatively weak spot. As a result, Riot will be buffing the item, changing the damage type from magic to physical, and the damage proc is going from 20 flat to 35 scaling to 85. The AD ratio is up as well, from 60 to 65%, and the AP ratio going from 45 to 60%. Even with these changes, we still expect Kraken to be a pretty niche pickup, but as a third or fourth damage option, now that it scales a little better, it won't be as bad of a pickup. Moonstone users have been completely overshadowed by Echoes of Helia users in 13.10, so Riot will be buffing Moonstone. The chain heal is going from 20 scaling to 35% to 20 scaling to 40%. Single heal is up as well from 15 scaling to 25% to 15 scaling to 30%. Small buff to Soraka here, but other than that, we can't see many other supports liking the item when Shirelia's and Echoes of Helia are in the game. Quick Blades users will be eating well in 13.11 with its AD being increased from 60 to 65. Ability Haste is going from 20 to 15. Mythic Passive is being changed from 5 Ability Haste to 5 AD. Even though you're losing the haste, the trade-off for AD is going to be more worth it in the majority of situations. Especially with Gale Force being nerfed this patch as well, watch out for Quick Blades users like Zaya and Lucian to take a step forward. Static Shiv has been performing quite poorly so far and Riot will be addressing that with a few buffs. Energized damage is going up from 60 scaling to 170 to 80 scaling to 190. Minion damage is increased as well from 220 to 250%. A few ADCs like Sivir, Vayne, and Tristana have been running Static in 13.10, so the buffs will give them an indirect boost. It will be really interesting to track Yona and Yasuo builds in 13.11 because with Gale Force nerfed and Static buffed, it's tough to say which will be the better rush option. If you want to see the Gale Force setup in action, our challenger mid laner Shori has a brand new commentary playing the build on our website. Moving on to a bunch of item nerfs, let's start off by looking at Ardent Sensor. The bonus attack speed is being nerfed quite heavily, going from 15 scaling to 30% to 20% flat. This will put a dent in some of the more powerful enchanters in meta, like Melio, Janna, and Sona. Echoes of Helia is receiving a much needed nerf as its heal and damage are being toned down. Healing per shard is going from 20 scaling to 100 from levels 1 to 18 to 20 scaling to 100 from levels 6 to 18. This is a bit confusing, but to make it a lot more simple, Echoes would heal for 40 at level 6 in 13.10, but it's now going to be healing for 20 at level 6 instead. Basically, the early game power of Echoes is being diminished, while the late game power stays the same. Damage per shard will see a similar treatment, going from 30 scaling to 200 from levels 1 to 18 to 30 scaling to 180 from levels 6 to 18. These Echoes and Ardent users like Janna and Sona will be hit the hardest in 13.11, which is understandable considering they held super high win rates in 13.10. Now for all the ADC item nerfs, first up we got some changes to Hurricane. The bonus magic damage on hit is dropping in half, going from 30 to 15. For someone like Kog'Maw who was building Hurricane second a lot of the time in 13.10, he can just build Blade of the Rune King instead and be completely fine. Zeri is one ADC who really likes Hurricane as a second pickup with her Bruiser build, so she will probably be feeling this nerf the most. Callista is not going to be liking this change either, but she's actually receiving some direct buffs, which should hopefully outweigh these Hurricane nerfs. In comparison to how hard other ADCs will be hit with the Gale Force and Storm Razor nerfs, the relative power of these Hurricane ADCs should not be dropping off much at all. Speaking of the Gale Force nerfs, the item will be receiving two separate changes. First up, the active damage is being lowered, with its crit scaling going from 250 to 200%. Maximum execute damage is down as well, from 160 to 150%. These nerfs alone are not too bad, but many champions have been running Gale 
Shell Force in combination with Storm Razor, so the changes will definitely add up. As for those Storm Razor nerfs, the AD on the item is dropping from 55 to 50. Energize damage is down as well from 25 to 15, while the AD ratio drops from 65 to 60%. A few of the ADCs we're looking at to see the biggest decline in 13.11 include Jin, Aphelios, and Caitlyn. All of these champs were loving the item combo of Storm and Gale Force and their alternative options have not been performing the best. For the likes of Lucian and Zaya, they have quick blades to fall back on, so the Gale and Storm combo being weaker won't have as much of an impact on them. And the final item nerf we have for 13.11 is the much needed nerf to Ghost Blade. Ghost Blade was far and beyond the best lethality mythic in 13.10, so Riot will be chopping its power down by lowering the bonus lethality from 8 scaling to 20 to 3 scaling to 12. Haste drops from 20 to 15. Distance per passive stack is going from 45 to 55. Pretty healthy nerfs overall, and with the likes of Dusk Blade being buffed, we definitely expect there to be a lot more variety and strategy involved when it comes down to choosing your mythic. If you autopilot purchased Ghost Blade in 13.10, you'd have been completely fine, but that won't be the case anymore for 13.11. Moving on to the top lane changes, with Prowler's Claw removed as a mythic item last patch, Renekton has seen a decline in strength, so Riot will be buffing him for 13.11. E cooldown is going from 18 scaling to 14 seconds to 16 scaling to 12 seconds. R cooldown drops from 120 at all ranks to 120 scaling to 80 seconds. R damage per second is up as well, from 50 scaling to 150 to 60 scaling to 180. These are actually pretty solid Renekton buffs that will help him in all facets of the game. From B up into A tier is how we'll be shifting Renekton on the tier list. Renekton is the only top laner with direct changes this patch, so let's jump right into the tier list. OP tier for top lane will be comprised of Malphite, Camille, and Orn. We're also giving Akali the push ahead of C tier for this patch, as she's receiving a buff to Q that we will go more in detail about when covering mid lane. Trinity Force users are the ones to watch for in 13.11, as the item is looking super strong but is still quite underrated. This is why Camille has been bumped up the tier list, and Jax could very well be argued for a spot in the OP tier as well. Our top three low elo recommendations to climb the fastest include Malphite, Mundo, and Garen. Highest on our ban list for top lane are Fiora, Orn, and Malphite. We have a bit of a mini rework hitting the rift for Ivern in 13.11, as there are mainly quality of life changes. Q jump logic has been adjusted. W on hit damage will apply to allies. This is a really interesting one as it could open up the potential for some support Ivern tech. Enemies in brush will now be revealed. E is going to refresh if it hits no enemies. This is a really big one actually because if we're interpreting this correctly, if you were to throw your E on your ADC, they take some damage from range but E doesn't hit anyone, they'll get a refresh on the shield. This could be super OP into heavy ranged comps where you'll rarely be in melee range to proc the damage from E. We definitely expect Ivern to see a spike in power as a result of these changes, and we'll be moving him up into the jungle A tier. Rek'Sai has been a bit on the weaker side as a result of the Prowler's Claw dash removal, so she's getting a few buffs in 13.11. Tremor's refresh rate is going from 1.5 to 1 second. Passive max heal is being changed so that the base amount is down, but it's now going to scale off your max health. Q cooldown is being lowered from 4 seconds at all ranks to 4 scaling to 2 seconds. Q reveal duration is down from 5 to 3 seconds. All in all, some pretty nice buffs to Rek'Sai, and even though she will be negative impacted by the Ghost Blade nerfs, these changes should help to even things out. A tier is where Rek'Sai will remain on the jungle tier list. Amumu has been dominating the lower ranks ever since his W buff, so Riot will be backtracking and taking off a lot of power from W. W base damage per second is going from 20 to 14. This is basically a partial revert of the buff from a few patches back. Prior to the original buffs, Amumu was a pretty weak B tier jungler, and then shot up to S tier after the changes, so now that he's seeing a partial revert, Amumu should fit in around the middle of the pack as a good A tier option. Moving on to the complete jungle tier list for patch 13.11, the OP tier will feature Kha'Zix, Jarvan, and Evelyn. Ghost Blade users are the ones hit the hardest in the jungle this patch, which is why we have moved Hecarim down into the A tier. Kha'Zix was already in an amazing spot even prior to the Ghost Blade introduction, so we don't see him losing much power overall. This is probably the last patch that Kha'Zix remains unnerfed if the Ghost Blade changes indeed aren't enough to move the needle. Top 3 low elo junglers of the patch are Ramus, Vi, and Nocturne. A few of the most banworthy junglers include Evelyn, Kha'Zix, and Jarvan. A very simple yet impactful buff is being issued to Akali in 13.11, with her Q damage being increased by 10 at all ranks. For a spell that you can spam out quite often, 10 damage is a pretty significant buff and will add up over an extended skirmish. Akali has been rotting in and around that C and B tier level in recent patches, but with this buff we expect her to solidify a spot in the B tier. 
We have a couple of Zier buffs penciled in for 13.11. First up with a buff to his Q cooldown, going from 14 scaling to 6 seconds to 12 scaling to 6 seconds. W AP ratio is up from 55 to 60%. W summon range is being increased from 500 to 525. The lost chapter buffs from 13.10 were actually pretty nice for Azir, and now with these changes in 13.11, he's going to be in a respectable spot. At least in comparison to where he usually is, as we will be moving Azir up from B and into A tier. Riot has one buff line up for Twisted Fate this patch, with his W cooldown dropping from 8, scaling to 6 seconds, to 6 seconds at all ranks. Considering you don't max out W until 2nd on TF, this change will actually feel really nice for the early to mid game. W is a spell you can be spamming out off cooldown in skirmishes, so 2 seconds off is actually quite big. Not a meta breaking change or anything, but we do expect it to be enough to push Twisted Fate back into a respectable A tier position. Aurelian Soul is the only mid laner who will be nerfed this patch with 2 changes to his E. E mana cost is being increased from 60 scaling to 100 to 80 scaling to 100. EAP ratio per second is going from 25 to 20 percent. This will definitely hurt Aurelian's ability to spam E out on waves throughout the laning phase and will make his early game even more exploitable than before. As a result of these nerfs, we will be shifting Aurelian down one tier going from S into A. Moving on to the mid lane tier list, we have a few alterations to discuss. OP tier will consist of Annie, Ari, and Pantheon. With Ghostblade users nerfed, it's going to bring back more priority to these mages like Annie and Ari. Talon and Zed are both being pushed down the tier list for 13.11, as they were definitely being inflated by how broken Ghostblade was in 13.10. A few champions you should prioritize to climb low elo the fastest include Malzahar, Aurelian Soul, and Annie. Best value bans for mid lane in 13.11 include Ari, Zed, and Fizz. Heading down to the bot lane, let's start off by looking at these Callista buffs. The first change will ensure that Callista's auto attack will no longer miss when targets leave vision. Total AD on attack is being increased from 90 to 100%. To compensate though, base AD is going from 66 to 61, and AD growth down from 3.75 to 3.25. Riot has stated this is a net buff though, due to the total AD on attack going from 90 to 100%. Q and E damage have both been increased to compensate for the base AD changes. Health regen and health growth are both going up as well. And lastly, base health is up from 574 to 600, while Callista E cooldown is going from 14 scaling to 8 seconds to 10 scaling to 8 seconds. These are exactly the kind of changes Callista mains have been waiting for, as Riot has decided to amplify her identity as that early game ADC. Damage and durability both up early on is big, and we will be moving Callista out of the C tier and into B for 13.11. Ophelios is going to be nerfed this patch as he snuck up to holding a 48% win rate for solo queue. It's kind of sad that this champion will never have close to a 50% win rate for solo queue because if he did, he'd be 100% pick ban in pro play. The nerf sees Ophelios Q AD per rank going from 5 scaling to 30 to 4.5 scaling to 27. It's not just this direct change that hurts Ophelios either, as the Storm Razor and Gale Force nerfs negatively affect him. Well, there was one patch where Aphelios wasn't the worst solo queue ADC, as we will be dropping him back down into C tier for 13.11. Jinx's time on top of the meta is definitely coming to a close this patch, as her attack speed growth is going from 1.36 to 1%. Not only this, but Jinx also suffers from the Storm Razor nerf along with the Hurricane nerf. There will be many better options to choose from moving forward, as Jinx will be dropping from S into A. We have a bunch of changes to break down for the ADC tier list, as we'll be moving Twitch into the OP tier, joining Karthus and Kog'Maw. Twitch and Kog are two of the only ADCs who were strong in 13.10 and aren't seeing their first two item purchases nerfed. The Rage Blade and Blade of the Ruin King combo is super strong on both champs and both items are untouched for 13.11. Jin, on the other hand, was really loving the Storm Razor into Gale Force combo, so with both items taking a hit, we have moved him down to S tier. Zeri is actually moving up this patch as her Bruiser build consisting of rushing Trinity Force is making her extremely strong. Misfortune drops down due to the Ghost Blade nerfs, while Samira is being bumped up as she will benefit from the Dust Blade buffs. Our top three picks for low elo this patch are Jin, Misfortune, and Jinx. A few ADCs most worth a ban for 13.11 include Kog'Maw, Zeri, and Twitch. The only support change for 13.11 is Rel, and she's receiving a pretty large overhaul. We'll have all the changes up on screen so you can pause and read the exact changes, but we'll keep the explanations a bit shorter. Rel's passive is being changed so that it now stacks and gets added on every ability. Rel's Q is now going to provide you with a stun, however the range of the spell, cooldown, and cast time are all being nerfed to compensate. W is being changed so that the movement speed is taken off the spell and added to her E. You will gain bonus attack speed and range when dismounted now. Instead of reducing Rel's movement speed down to 280 when dismounted, she's going to be slowed by 15%, which is a nerf early on, but a buff later. Since Rel's dismounted form of W is being significantly buffed, her mounted form is seeing a bunch of nerfs. E is being changed completely, as it will now provide you movement speed that is doubled when charging towards an enemy. Your ally will also gain this movement speed, which will make all in plays very lethal. After using E, your next attack is also going to deal bonus damage. 
damage. So those are all the changes. For a quick TLDR, Rel's E will no longer have a stun as that is being transferred to her Q. Rel W will no longer have the movement speed boost as that has been transferred to her E. Rel W in dismounted form will have much stronger dueling power now. Overall, we see Rel being as powerful, if not more powerful after these changes, and we will be leaving her in the support S tier for now. The support tier list won't be changing a whole lot for 13.11 as the three champs in our OP tier will consist of Janna, Blitzcrank, and Melio. Sona is being pushed down to S tier as the Echoes of Helia and Ardent Sensor nerfs will remove her OP tier status. Janna has been a cut above all other enchanters in 13.10, so even with the nerfs to items, we don't expect it to be enough to push her down the tier list. Definitely watch out for Soraka this patch as we expect her to become one of the better enchanters due to Moonstone buffs and Echoes of Helia nerfs. To climb low elo the fastest from the support role, look into adding Heimerdinger, Melio, or Zyra to your champion pool. Best support bands of the patch are Rakan, Blitzcrank, and Melio. So that's gonna be all for this one, guys, but if you want to improve fast and get the rank you always wanted, then go to skillcap.com. With premium courses for every role and skill taught by the best players, Skillcap is the perfect platform to help take your game to the next level. Take our wave control course. While you wait for your next game to start, you can learn freezing, fast pushing, slow pushing, bouncing waves, the list goes on, all in just a few minutes to maximize your improvement rate. Or maybe you just like seeing your opponent's health go to zero. Then you'll love our trading course. We even have a skill test at the end so you can see how good you really are. Players just like you are leaving five star reviews and raving at how helpful they are. That's not all we offer though, as every week we release 10 brand new smurf commentaries where a challenger player teaches you how to climb out of the exact rank you're stuck in. If you're looking for something more personal instead, then we got you covered with one-on-one -on -one coaching from our trained challenger experts. All this seemed too good to be true? Well, don't worry, we're backed by a rank up guarantee. If you don't significantly improve while actively using skill cap, then you get your money back, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below and get the rank you've always wanted. And that's going to conclude our latest update on the solo queue tier list, this time for patch 13.11. Thanks so much for watching, good luck in solo queue, and we'll catch you in the next one.